Okay, one, two, three. Hello everyone, another fantastic, magical morning, and today we're gonna play another standard event, farming some packs and gems, and since it's Friday, let's go ahead and make a long video, cause we got 7 wins playing a John deck, and John is a very particular color, much like uh, the Rakdos Anvil deck, most of the decks have, you know, the feeling that, oh, I'm really ahead, I'm gonna win this no matter what, or I'm so far behind, <laughs> please kill me. But Junt and Rakdos Anvil are more like, they don't really die, and then they eventually win. At least that's the feeling I get whenever I play these decks, that's why I really like them. So yeah, let's play some Reflection of Kikiyiki and Taivar, let's go straight to the deck list. Okay, so this is the deck we are gonna play today. Let's go over the cards. We got Cut Down, we play Strangle, we have Go for the Throat, Shigeki, Blood Tooth Harvester, we play Reckoner Bankbuster, we got Fable of the Mirror Breaker, we got Shielder the Apocalypse, Unleash the Inferno, we got Vindictive Flame Soaker, Shieldred's Edict, we have Glissa Sunslayer, we have Tyvar Jubilant Brawler, and Nissa Ascended Animist, and finally, two Cops of Gix's Command. And so, what is the goal of this deck? Well, we just want to essentially grind the opponent to dust, right? And we're gonna play around this card, Tyvar Jubilant Brawler. It's a 3 mana 3 loyal to Planeswalker. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. Uh, plus 1, untap up to 1 target creature. Minus 2, mill 3 cards. Then you may return a creature card with the mana value 2 or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. And you might ask yourself, what kind of creature has an activated ability that you that's very popular in today's meta? And obviously that's gonna be Blood Tooth Harvester, which is a 2 mana 3 2 vampire. When it enters the battlefield, create a blood token, you can tap him and sacrifice him, and target creature get minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is twice the number of blood tokens you control, activate only as a sorcery. So what you can do essentially is that you have Tyvar on the battlefield, you play at Blood Tooth Harvester, you tap him, sacrifice, and kill a creature, then you use Tyvar Jubilant Brawler's second ability, minus two, mill three cards and get Blood Tooth Harvester back, and then you can kill another creature, and it adds up. Another cool activated ability that's really, really, really prevalent in the meta is going to be the third chapter of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, The Reflection of Kikiyiki, in which for one colorless and tap him, you can create a to token that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature you control, except it has haste, and sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So yeah, like... <laughs> So the moment you get the Reflection of Kikiki, you can just start copying stuff such as uh, Blood Tooth Harvester. And uh, yeah, another cool activated ability that I personally really like is the Shigeki Jukai Visionary. It's a 2 mana 1-3, and for 2 mana and tap it, return Shi uh, Shigeki Jukai Visionary to its owner's hand, reveal the top 4 cards of your library, you may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped, and put the rest into your graveyard, and for a channel ability of 2 green and 2 X, discard Shigeki and return X target non-legendary cards from your graveyard to your hand. So. Yeah, that's the whole point of playing Tyra Jubilant Brawler. Another cool card that fits perfectly in John is going to be Glissa Sunslayer or Graveyard Trespasser on steroids. It's a 3 mana 3 3 first strike and death touch, which means it will never lose combat unless the other creature has <laughs> first strike, at least. Uh, whenever Glissa Sunslayer deals combat damage to a player, choose one, you draw a card and you lose life, or destroy target enchantment, or remove up to three counters from target permanent. So either the opponent you know, blocks and they lose, or they don't block and they still lose. It's just a, such a fantastic card and yeah, I, I love playing it in any Gruul or, <laughs> not Gruul, in any Golgari or Jan decks. Uh, the next cards that work really well in John is going to be the Vindictive Flame Soaker. I've shown him before. It's a 1 mana 1 2. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put an oil counter on Vindictive Flame Soaker. And for 7 mana, sacrifice Vindictive Flame Soaker and discard your hand, then draw 4 cards. This ability costs 1 less to activate for each oil counter on Vindictive Flame Soaker. And yeah, this is more. Uh, works better for control matchups and not so well against aggro, so we're only playing two copies. And finally we have Shoulders Edict, it's just a 2 mana instant choose one, each opponent sacrifice a non-token creature, or each opponent sacrifice a creature token, or each opponent sacrifice a planeswalker. So it's pretty cool for removal. And finally just one copy of Nissa Ascendant Animus, which is a 7 mana, 7 loyalty, and you can pay 2 Phyrexian mana. 
Uh, yeah, it's complicated. Plus one, create an XX green Phyrexian horror creature token where X is equal to the planeswalker's loyalty. Minus one, destroy target artifact or enchantment. And minus seven, until end of turn, creatures you control get plus one plus one for each forest you control and gain trample. I just want one copy just to finish the job. Most likely we're gonna discard it to a blood token if you can't really use it. And what's really cool here else is that you can use Gix with Command just to get back Shigeki Juka Visionary. Then use Shigeki Juka Visionary to get it back and you can just use a loop here for the late game and... Yeah, there's a lot of people playing Artifacts and Enchantments, so Unleash the Inferno is fantastic and Shieldred is us another way for us to win the game. I really, really do enjoy this deck and we do get 7 wins, so I really hope you enjoy the gameplay. Let's go to the first... Game. Okay, let's get started. As always, if you have any questions about the deck or the gameplay, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below. You know I love to hear from you and I try to answer as fast as I can. And if you happen to enjoy the content, please give this video a like. That would help me out tremendously. Alright, let's start the first game. Okay, opponent gets to go first, that makes me feel bad, but we have the Harvester and Tyvar, so yeah, makes me feel good. So Crazy Devil, you're okay, possibly Mono White, that can either be that new midrange deck that's been popping up everywhere, or it could just be Soldiers, okay, it's midrange. Uh, this is gonna be uh, a long game, I guess. But, you know, Jund, much like uh, Rakdos Anvil, do tend to take longer time to actually finish, so... It's to be expected. Either way, uh, let's go ahead and get our Blooded Harvester out. Cost one life, but hey, I'll take it. And yeah, let's grind each other out. Three mana, do you have your wedding announcement? Do you have your Lord of the Third Path? Oh no, not my treasure! Man, that card is so annoying. Uh, okay. Sure, that's a perfect land. Uh, I guess we just shoot this and attack. I don't think he's going to block. We just want to push damage as fast as possible. It is funny that we only have one copy of Nisa. I, I guarantee you, in this event, we're gonna find her a lot. Alright, four mana nothing. You know what that means, children, kids. That is definitely an Emperor just burning a hole in the opponent's pocket. So let's just get Tyver out and... Yeah, plus him, I think. Yeah, look at that stick. Tyra is such a cool card. So yeah, we're just gonna plus him for now. Since we, the goal is to essentially use Harvester multiple times. We could sacrifice Harvester here to kill the, the thing, but I don't want to. The thing is we could attack here. Hmm, actually I think... <sighs> nah. The thing is he's gonna play out his... Uh, Emperor here, like, there's no surprise there. Rise, yeah, it's not a surprise opponent. Um, and he's gonna make a token, he's gonna give the token first strike, and then I have to jump with my Blood Tooth Harvester. If I had just attacked my Harvester, he would have exit. What the f is this? Elish Norn? I did not expect that. Okay. So. This complicates things a little bit. How are we gonna kill that? Uh, I think we'll just take it here. Okay, that is a very good draw. So how are we gonna do things here? Make him sacrifice the Elish Norm for sure. And... What else, really, can we do? We could put the counters on Blood Death Harvester and attack. That could also work. But then we're gonna lose Tyvar, but I think at this point it's just how the world is. Man, yeah, we, yeah, it's annoying that he put the counter on the token, uh, so we can't really make him destroy everything that has power two or less. So yeah, we stick to the counters and make him sacrifice Elish Norn here. Uh, you please. And he's gonna have to jump with his, probably his, um, let's him farmland, farmland. And then, uh, yeah, we, what's gonna happen is, so, okay, he does this, good. Then we are gonna untap. We gain five life, that's pretty sweet, and we'll just have to jump. I think we still wanna keep uh, Tyra around. So we can jump. And that, it's a, it's so annoying he destroyed my blood token. That, you have no idea how much that triggers me. Ossification, alright, there, there goes my harvester. 
Actually, that might not be too bad. We do have Nissa. Nissa's. Um, who do you want to pick? Okay. And Nissa's uh, minus one ability can. So we can get back our blood to Tharster. Okay. So yeah, we're already in the mid mid game here now, and yeah, <laughs> they have their bankbuster. We do not, so they're gonna outgrind us here unless we find something quick. The yep, there goes there goes my Tiber. Or what are you gonna do? We just attack face. How hard is this? So yeah, you figure it out. Congratulations, Bono White. By Tiber. So, oh, that isn't that beautiful? <laughs> isn't that beautiful? Uh, okay, so do you want to get back? Hmm. So we, we're gonna do this for sure, so we can get uh, Nissa out on a higher uh, loyalty. I think, we, obviously, we're gonna kill the Emperor. And uh, either we get back our uh, Blooded Harvester or we kill his uh, Bankbuster. And, and you know what? Getting free board presence is not too bad. And we're, we're gonna destroy what we don't destroy with Nissa the other turn. So let's get the board presence here. We'll have something to defend Nissa next turn as well. Yeah, Unleash the Infernos. Really good. It's a sweet card. Cool, and we get a blood token. And now we just need to avoid drawing land for a while. Sure, we can also use it to cycle our land here, which is not too bad as well. And Zitan. So yeah, he's gonna have one card advantage, which is fine. Yep, why don't you draw, you lucky? Okay, wedding announcement. <laughs> Love it. Oh god, so it's gonna be between between wedding announcement or bank bust, which one's worse? I do not know. In terms of grindiness, I guess it has to be the wedding announcement, right? We're just gonna take four here. We get to we go back to our regular life total. Yeah, not a scratch. All right, that's what we did not want to see. Hmm. So yeah, we do have. We can at least get this one out without uh, taking any damage from the Frexian mana. You know, opponent, if you could just you know let me. Uh, or do you have counter spells with your white ma mana? What do you have? And I think we have to, to kill the wedding announcement. It is. They're gonna attack and they're gonna get the same effect of a bank bus bankbuster. So. Yeah, let's go with this. I don't want him to get the Anthem. And yeah, no attack. At least we can... I mean, he's not gonna have enough power to actually kill Nissa. So we're at least gonna make tokens and it's gonna cost us nothing. It's just gonna add loyalty, so that's pretty good. Fine. I mean, the mid-range one white deck is really, really fun to play, don't get me wrong. That's the deck we used last time to get seven wins in a standard event, so yeah. Yeah, as long as it's mid-range, I'm happy, but god damn, the games are long. Okay. So we're gonna have to jump with a... Okay, it's fine. Nissa will still... We could... Actually, you know what? He's gonna sacrifice his card advantage here, which is kind of good. Because now we're gonna use Nissa's ability to do, to destroy the Bankbuster. I think that's worth it. So we're gonna go down to two here, then go down to one. Then Nissa sure will die, but she has done enough work in my opinion. And okay, thank you. We're getting something good here. So let's go ahead and see what we get here from this worthless land. Can we get something else besides land? Please, game. Please. Oh, that's a failure. Uh, let's destroy the Bankbuster. And we're just gonna keep the land in our hand and cycle it with the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So yeah, the grind keeps going on, I mean, what are we, like, six minutes into this game? And uh, yeah, we're, one is at 17 and one is at 19. And it's all about top decking now. Who can outvalue the other? You know what would be nice? A Shieldred. A Shieldred would make, would make things so much easier. Well, it targets my creature and I land, so yeah, <laughs> Mossification, sure. Well, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, we're gonna take six here, go down to 13. And then, yeah, we need to find something to actually... Something, but we've drawn three lands in a row, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, we need to find something else. Please, Dak. You're on my side, right? 
If we could get like a Gix command, I would be very happy. And then we can get creatures back too. Uh, do we keep that or do we cycle it? We do have the mana to actually activate his ability, so let's keep it. That's pretty good too as well. So let's go like this. And uh, then Fable, just add a uh, counter. And if we get a land next turn, we'll cycle it. And then, yeah, we're just going to... We'll find answers eventually. We can't be this unlucky. Getting Fable, it's... it's Fable is such a good card because regardless of when you draw it, it doesn't have to be on curve, it's still a fantastic card. Yeah, we're just gonna take this. Okay, that suggests he has, to, he has an invoke, uh, what's called an emperor, so these minions are too important, sadly. Sadly, I can't risk sacrificing them at this point, even though we're down to six now. Okay. Oh. Oh. Mamma mia, that's pretty good. Uh, I think, hmm, we are not sacrificing that, we are using it, we're definitely making him sacrifice a big creature. Should we just wipe the board? <sighs> With two fables? I don't think so. But what else are we going to do? Sacrifice and return up to two creatures? We're just going to get one back, I think. We can put the counter on for life gain, I think that's worth it. Uh... Da -da -da -da. Sure, how about you? And let's attack with just you, go up to 10. Cool. And then see, now the opponent has at least 3 targets and hopefully the Vindictive Flamestoker can stay away from trouble. And there we go. I think we actually have this game, because we're gonna use this to kill that. And yeah. Yeah, if he doesn't do anything about my uh, if reflections here, Actually, let's just hold them. We can do it at the end of his turn. Because if he doesn't have anything, if he doesn't have a farewell, then we win here. Easily. And you know exactly how we win, right? We have two Kikikis on the board, of course. You know you know how we're gonna win. You know exactly how we're gonna win. So just pray with me here. No farewell. Farewell would be very scary right now. Well, it lost priority very quick. Okay. So let's do this. Let's make the army. Yeah, it is a nice opponent. It's called having a good tank. Alright. And that should... Uh, now we have one more to treasure, yeah. So, right. Doesn't feel too bad, now does it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10. So that's 20 damage, 24, 25 damage. So, yeah, I don't know what card you have in your hand, but I don't think it's going to do much against this. <laughs> Reflection of Kikiki is definitely the best card in standard. Ah, oh, this is so satisfying. Okay, we get to go first. We have some fast lands. We do have Blood Tooth Harvester against Lucky Charms. You know, I haven't had I haven't had that cereal in a while. I do like it though, and the sleeves are pretty dope here. Okay, red on the draw. That's I mean, is it my lucky day or what? Let's get Harvester out and pass the turn. And he doesn't have a play with fire. It feels even better. Turn three, Fable. Turn four, Unleash the Inferno. Turn yeah, it's just mwah, love this. What the fuck is this? Oh yeah, I've played against it before, so this is a mid-range mono red, huh? This game might not be <laughs> over as fast as I wanted to. Uh, yeah, what a blocker, huh? Two and a zero four and becomes a four four at uh, a turn four. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to use Geek's Command on that. So, okay, Bankbuster, is that it? Okay, that's pretty cool. Well, let's cycle some cards here. What are the chances of drawing another card? Another land, I mean. I think we're... F uh, it's not worth the risk. So... I think we just go ahead and kill this uh, Stomper and also the Bankbuster. I mean... <laughs> this, uh, I can't get much better than this. The Unleash the Inferno, man. What a card. Let's go ahead and attack and make a treasure. Perfect. 
All right, blast zone was a bit tricky, but it's fine. So it's gonna be like, yeah, it's the all will be one one red deck, which is really cool. I'm really happy you're trying something new, Lucky Charms. But standard events are very cool against new decks. Believe me, I know. Okay, so hope he needs to have a Brotherhood's End here to deal with this board, otherwise he's mucho screwed up. So let's just go ahead and attack here, and uh, I think we should just hold our stuff here. If I if I can be completely honest. Because uh, if he doesn't deal with this board, he just loses, right? I mean, if you're using single target removal, then that suggests that you don't have... Okay, he doesn't... Maybe, okay, he might not have a board wipe then. It's pretty good then. He used a braid to not kill my reflection, so he must have another one to kill reflection of Kikiki. So yeah, let's attack here. And let's play out our Vindictive Flamestoker. And hopefully the opponent gives me something to target with, uh, <laughs> go for the throat. Yeah, you must have another abrader. Yeah, okay, cool. So we can play other stuff here, no problem. You and, uh, we could, yeah, let's just play you out. Shigeki is a fantastic card. Go for the throat as well. This is all about what he's gonna play here. Okay, Koth has arrived, he's gonna kill one of my creatures. So that's annoying, but we can deal with it. And wait, what the? You have no respect for my creature's opponent. This is four damage. At yeah, okay, we're gonna kill it. We're gonna kill your cough. And we're gonna get uh, a Blooded Harvester back from our graveyard, so. Haha! <laughs> Lulz. Alright. The priority is too quick for not. Oh, even that. We can just channel the land. Yeah, we can channel land instead of using Gig's command. Come on, us. That's not too bad either. And we can hold. We at the same time we hold mana to use. Uh, go for the throat. So let's go ahead and do this. Well, at least you get a mountain. Cough. It's a four mana spell. It gives you a mountain and gains six life. So I guess that's pretty good, huh? Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And there's burn down the house. Yep, we we knew it was gonna happen. We knew it, there was a chance. It's a mid-range one red deck after all. Uh, okay, harvester is not bad. Gix command. Is it bad to use it now? You think? Hmm. I think. Yeah, I think we'll save it a little bit. We'll hold the go for the throat here, and we'll, he has to build a board, right? He has to build a board. Otherwise, it's just. Game was over for the opponents. Mightstone Wixen, what the heck? What are you playing? Is this a big red deck with cough? I can get behind that. That's a good. Okay, it doesn't even respect the harvester. So what do you have? Like, do you have the city stalker leveler? And okay. Yeah, the opponent's having some good cards here. This changes the game plan. Game plan a little bit. Uh, I think we can toss to go for the throat. His creatures are gonna be artifacts then. We don't need that. We need to find something else. Okay, Fable is always a good thing to get. It would be nice to get Fable out with a tie bar. Land can be cycled either to the... Maybe it's worth just playing out. I mean, having five lands is good, actually. Alright, let's go ahead and attack. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to play the land. Down to 10. Halfway there, boys. Halfway there. So let's see if he has another board wipe. If it does, uh, it's gonna make this game a bit harder. Do you have your City Stalker? 1, 2, th 5, 6. Yeah, he has 8 mana. So if he has it, he can play it. If it does, it's probably gonna... Oh, Fable. Okay, we're good. He doesn't have it. At least not for now. Okay. Are we in a position of winning here soon? He's at 10. Shieldred is really good here too. I think this is a situation where we don't discard anything. They are rare, but we play at Shieldred, we attack with both. And... Yeah. He's gonna go down too. He's gonna jump the Harvester for sure. So might as well just use it here. And then we can actually shoulder one, two, three, four. We don't have, yeah, we have enough mana for shoulder plus Gix's command. The question is, should we save Gix's command in case we have to reanimate shoulder? And I do think that's the correct idea as well. So let's just play out shoulder for now and hold the Gix's command. 
Now, if he has a board white like a burned on the house, he has to use it. So he's down to six. He's not gonna dare to discard any cards here. I mean, he can if he really wants to, but then he's gonna lose a lot of life. Shoulder is just the. Of all the things that can actually work against Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Shoulder is perfect. Alright, what are you gonna do? There it is. My baby. My favorite card from the previous set. And there goes Shoulder. Perfect. So, okay, we're going to have to use Kick's command and we're going to have to return creatures from our graveyard. And uh, we're going to get Shielded back. Problem is that when we cast Kick's command, obviously it's going to crew up the City Soccer level right away. I think we hold the Silver and Springs here. Um, so get Shielded back. We could get Shigeki back just to like... Keep the endless loop going between the Gix command and Sh uh, Shigeki. That's always cool. Hmm. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, even the the Power Stone can be used to pay for the abilities of Shigeki as well. Uh, let's go ahead and play Gix's command first here. So make him sacrifice and uh, grab two creatures from our graveyard. Yeah. All right, uh, Shieldred and uh, Shigeki, yeah. Shigeki, yeah. Oh, come on, this stupid <laughs> mouse. And why didn't he crew up? He has to, doesn't, he didn't do it. <laughs> uh, that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, he needs a board wipe now. Let's attack, bring him down to four. He, uh... He can play out his uh, City Stalker and attack and kill my shield, but then we still have the power on the board enough to kill him. So yeah, I think this is it. <laughs> what a game. What a game indeed. Sure. One thing is for sure, he needs to kill my shield with the cards he has in his hand. He can't use the Bank Buster. And we're still at 20 life, I just realized that. <laughs> I'm telling you, this deck doesn't seem like he can do much. Okay, cool. So he has one, two, three, four, five, six. You cannot you you can't get out the City Soccer Engineer anymore. Sure. He needs to play another creature though. What else are you gonna do? Yeah, this deck it doesn't look like much, this John deck, but look where we are right now. We have slowly grinded this opponent down to two life. It's just this deck is like a cockroach, it just doesn't die. Okay, so we okay. Then we win. That was a good attempt, unless he has something for 3 mana, 2 of them being colorless. It can't be used for spells, it has to be a channel built in, I can't think of anything that he can use. Alright, we win. I'm uh, just gonna use Shigeki here and get back our... Uh, uh, go for the throat. And then just attack, and that should be it. Ah, what a game. Just 2 is fine. And uh, we can... you... And uh, the... Uh, I think we just grab. Doesn't matter, I don't think he has anything, but Gig's command is always good. Just to keep the loop going. Sure. And then, yeah, I think the opponent is realizing what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Oh, yeah, these games are long, man. Oh, yeah, I need a drink. Okay, we get to go first. This hand is fine against Onisuko PDCA. Cool, we forgot the first capitalized first letter, but it's fine. Oh, it's mulliganing. Ha ha ha. Hate to see it happen to you, I'd love to see it happen to others. Alright, let's go ahead and get our tap land out and pass the turn. So, PDCA, what do you play? Okay, oh wow, Grixis. We're hitting all the midrange decks here today. <laughs> Two midrange, one white, and then some weird one red deck, and now this. It doesn't end. You have your own bank buster on turn two. Helfer? I wonder what he's gonna discard. I mean, he's probably, probably gonna take Tyra. Oh wow, Gissa? Haha, <laughs> new one. Uh, let's get the Fable out. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, why didn't he take the Fable? Why Gissa? Is he playing like all enchantments or something? Okay, Corpse of Pressure. Okay, that's why he wanted to take Gissa. He wanted to get card advantage because Corpse of Pressure is so good. <laughs> God, I hate this card. It's getting on my nerves. Wow, 
While we're still young on this Okopedia CA, it can't be this difficult. Come on, dude. All right, finally. Okay, wow, he's playing. Oh no, Atrexa. <laughs> we might be dead. Uh, Nissa is never gonna get out of here. Uh, I don't think so. It's a f nice finisher against Aggro, but here uh, we can't. We're gonna draw another land, right? Do I dare? Uh, yeah, we dare. Land? Man, that was bad. Okay, so. <laughs> Would it be Harvester or Giz? I guess we play at the Gixa. Gix Gixa since he was so scared and crewed up. And attack for at least 4 damage here. Start working on his life total. Not you, please. Yeah, missed the land drop because of greed in us. I, I, I don't think I'm the first one in the world of magic, but <laughs> still doesn't feel good. Do you have your Shelly shielded on turn uh, 4? On curve? Only so could CA. Alright, soul transfer. It means he's not gonna do anything else. Is he gonna attack? Please attack opponent. You have to be a little bit aggressive here. Come on. Come on! Okay, never mind. So, I think we just play a Tiber here then. And. Hmm, we can't copy. Yeah. We can copy you, yeah. And uh, crew up. We can still deal some damage. Yeah. That works fine. And we can bring him down to 12. It's a bit, it's very aggressive, I, I know. But uh, I like it. You know what? I could have just tapped Reflection of Kikiyaki to do that. I don't need to do that. That was a mistake. So, <laughs> uh, so stupid. I would have had one mana open. That's fine. I think he attacks. We just let Tyvar take it. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. What do you have, Onisuko? Shelly, Shelly, how he sees me. Ah, uh -huh. Shelly, Shelly. Alright, so, land. <laughs> well, it's, it's alright, I guess. Question is, do you think opponent is dumb enough to block my token? Because then I would rather... Yeah. Do you think so? So we just cope. Mm, should we do this after or before combat? Let's see if you let's let's see if he does. <laughs> I'm curious to see if he blocks this token. If he does, I mean that's what it is. All right, he did. Well then, let's copy the harvester. No, 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 no. Let's copy the harvester. Let's uh, kill the Shelly. And let's untap. And that's how you do it. That's the way the cookie crumble. And uh, might as well clear his board here while we're at it. Because Kikiki is just too goddamn good. And now we have three blood tokens to cycle, you know, all the lands we get. So if you ever wanted to know why... Oh my god. I should have crewed up. <laughs> why didn't I crew up the Bankbuster? He would be down to eight. Ah oh man, this, those previous three games are just nailing me in the brain. They were so long. Sure, another Corpse Appraiser to <laughs> look for another card. Well, yeah, you wouldn't want to draw those lands, I suppose. Another Corpse Appraiser, you gotta be kidding me. It's fine, we can kill both of them with the uh, Harvester. Sure. Wow, he... He binned the Shelly. It's kind of strange. Let's get rid of this. You are worthless. <laughs> Still worthless. Okay, that's not too bad. Hmm. Instead of taking a turn, because he grabbed something that he didn't want to shell shoulder force, we should try to kill the opponent here. Um. Hmm. I think we want to go for a massive amount of damage. And what we can do is we can copy the harvester here. And uh, we can untap. Actually, yeah, let's untap you. And let's go again with you. And now let's uh, 
do, do, do. I think we want to save the Gex command, if I'm honest. And now we can crew up with, uh, not you, this one. And uh, I'm curious to think, if I use Gex's command, we can put the counters on Bank Buster. Uh, but if I attack here, I'm sure, pretty sure it's going to double block the Bank Buster and take six. So I don't think it's worth So yeah, I think we let him do that and we can think he did something good. And then he needs to have something to deal with a like, Reflection and Kikiki plus Blooded Harvester plus Tyvar. So yeah, let's just attack for 10 here. And he can finish my uh, uh, Tyvar if he wants to. So yeah, he double locks here. Okay, so it's down to 6. I guess we could play Gix here just to protect Tyvar. Uh, I think that's pretty Let's just save it. It's fine. I don't think he can... I don't think he dares to attack down Tyvar here, if I'm honest. He needs to have the 3-3 three, three as a blocker. Big score, okay. The opponent is sweating. Sure. He's not gonna attack here. Yeah, he's not. Oh man, these games are so long. I'm losing brain power. And he's tapped out here. Okay, this is just game over. This is just game over. Sure. I mean, that's... Ah, what a draw, I mean. Sure. Well, how would you like to kill him? Well, how about we do this? And let's play you out. And let's sacrifice and kill you. And let's use the negative ability just to showcase how it works. Yeah, that's a lot of land and our last Blood to Thorister, I think. And let's do minus 14, minus 14 on this token, and let's attack for exactly full. So I probably did some stuff wrong here, but I'm tired, man. You need to be fully awake when you're going to play this deck. Okay, we get to go first, thank god. This hand is a bit slow, but we have Vindictive Flame Soaker. Actually, it's it's fine against KC Poltergeist. Alright, cool, cool, I suppose. No capitalized first letter, but cool, I suppose. So what do you play? Black, huh? Okay, it's one of black. Alright, that could be difficult. Uh, we don't have a turn to play, so let's just get... Uh, let's attack here, it's not gonna block. Every damage matter, right? They all matter. Yeah. So do you have your Tenacious Underdog on turn 2, or the, the Shade of uh, Iran? <laughs> Whatever it's called, I can never remember the name. But Shade of Iran was like a card from Torment back in the day when I was a child and I played Magic, and it was like... 10 bucks to buy a single copy and I was like, wow, it must be really cool. No, no, underdog. Huh. Underdog is cool too. Sure. Okay. So I think uh, I guess that's the right way to go here. It's just a perfect blocker and if the opponent has a... It does, uh, Cat Town doesn't touch it and uh, yeah, if the opponent just wanna remove it, I mean, then we get to keep our Vindictive Flame Stoker. Sure, it's a 2-2. Two, two. Alright, I guess he doesn't have anything, that's fine. What that? Okay. First strike and death touch opponent. Yeah, it is an oops. Uh, let's just uh, get the Fable out. And uh, let's attack with just... Eh, let's go. We're not gonna block with the Flame Stalker. Let's go ahead and draw some cards. And this is why Gissa is such a good card. Okay, that's also really good. Perfect timing for it in case he plays a Shieldred. Actually, it's a terrible timing in case he plays Shieldred because... <laughs> ah, the underdog is still here. Alright, Miser's Shadow, that's what it's called. That's my shade of Aran right there. Sure. Uh, we're at 15, I think we're fine, we don't have to block this. Well, we're getting all the lands. That's not too bad. I don't want to discard anything here. The opponent should be sweating from seeing that. So I think it is Harvester into Tywar and just uh, uh, destroy the underdog. And then we attack with Gissa and uh, untap it. I think that's fine. I would love to use Blooded Harvester on the Mr. Shadow, but he has one mana open, so he's gonna uh, survive. 
and sadly uh, the harvester is gonna be, be XL just due to Mystery Shadow as well. So Mystery Shadow is not a joke of a card, it's really good. It's like, uh, yeah, it's really, really good. So let's just stick to the plan. Yep. You have priority because either of a... Okay, yeah, here we go. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and attack and draw a card. Whenever we are allowed. Thank you. You're not gonna block. Cool, and I think Gissa plus Destroyer. Gissa plus Tyver is so good because attack, no one dares to block, and we just untap it, and no one dares to attack. It's just... Oh, what a card. Alright, and the opponent is stuck at only 3 mana, so it's a bit unfortunate for him, but... You know, he kept maybe a greedy hand, and he could be unlucky too, but he was not unlucky to attack into Death Touch with first strike, so... Could just be an idiot. Um, then again, <laughs> I made equal mistakes all the time. So, we can start copying stuff with uh, Kiki Iki for free, uh, right away, I mean. Uh... We could use Geek's command here and uh, make him kill one of his creatures and then put counters on Gisa and then attack and un uh, untap. Could do that. Hmm. What else do we want to do? I think this is fair. We can actually just, yeah, copy the reflection of Kiki Iki. Uh, the, the token. Alright, cut down. I figured as much. So, what else are we gonna do? Uh, we could attack and untap. We should just... <sighs> Maybe just go ahead and play the next uh, fable here. Nah, I'm role playing because, yeah. And we're playing with a pretty good hand. The opponent is struggling, so we should not have to think so much. But I am L tired. Let's go ahead and attack with these. Uh, yep. Yeah. Are you gonna take uh, 7 damage opponent? Go down to 5. <laughs> yes. Sure. Now uh, we get to draw another card, which is just delightful. That's really good. Uh, we could just play out Harvester here and just kill the Shade. The Shade has been bugging me. It's a shame though that, uh, yeah, Harvester is going to go away here, but it is what it is. Shade is gone at least, thank god. And let's go ahead and untap our Gissa. Glissa. Sure. And yeah, opponent, you go. I don't know how you're gonna get out of this mess, but it'd be really cool if you did. Direction of Flesh Gorger. All right, you did not get out of the mess, sadly. All right, mine turn. And it's fine, we can cycle it. We only need one Geek's Command here, but we're just gonna use Geek's Command and <laughs> look at the lands. Uh, just to make him sacrifice the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger and put the counters out. Yeah. Yeah, we can put the counters on you, it's fine. Yeah, we can sacrifice the last creature, and that's it. I mean, this uh, opponent did fairly well for only having three mana. I'm sure he has invoked despairs and, and everything. He could have just gotten unlucky. Uh, but we didn't, and uh, yeah, <laughs> magic is magic. Alright, 6 2. So, yeah, last game. Hopefully, we can actually pull through and get that sweet reward. Okay, opponent gets to go first, that is a bit infuriating, but we'll try our hardest. So, MTG Others, I mean, cool, or so, huh? Well, let's get our fast lands out, and yeah, god, I love these fast lands, and obviously Jun gets the cards right away. Talia, okay, that's annoying. Uh, I think Shigeki could actually work pretty well here, it's a good blocker, but... <laughs> I want to threaten to kill him next turn, so Harvester is always... I think Harvester is always going to be the best to drop <laughs> in any situation. It's just... unless you're playing the wrong colors, then of course Talia might be better. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna do that. Okay, he doesn't have anything. So, I mean, we can raise. Harvester is stronger. Let's get you out. And we can go ahead and attack whenever we are allowed. Sure. Boop him in the face. And we'll just keep Katan open. Sure. 
Yeah, we'll just take it. Four mana, nothing, huh? And he doesn't have two white mana for the, for the Emperor, so it's pretty sweet. I don't know, it's, it's some weird Esper deck the opponent is playing. Urtai? Oh, I guess he's gonna kill my blood to the Oh, he's gonna counter it. Huh. I guess he really wanna keep his Tali alive. Uh, Gliss is really cool. So, let's go ahead and just... I think if we attack, it's just gonna... Urtai is just gonna block the Harvester, right? Do you really care about... Hmm. I don't really care about killing Talia this early. Talia's not... It's, it's just a... It's, a, it's an annoying card, but it's nothing devastating. And we can use the Blood Token to throw away one of the Gixes. Or a Shigeki. Yeah, it's just gonna block here. It's fine. And we'll pass the turn. Skrull Defector Might, huh? And Toulouse Clear Conductor. Clever. <laughs> man, can't read for crap. Yeah, that's a Raven Man. Huh. I haven't seen anyone play that before. Maybe there's something to this deck. I mean, <laughs> it's in the very end. So what do we do here? I think we have to remove something before Squirrel becomes uh, online. So let's go ahead and hit you. And uh, let's go ahead. It's a shame that Gissa can't destroy artifacts, otherwise it would be dope. Sure. Let's draw me a card. Alright, that's pretty good. So let's just go ahead and kill the opponent's board. Because our Harvester did not get exiled this time. I'm pretty sure. Let's check. Yeah, it's there. Alright, let's go ahead. Get Harvester back. And kill to lose. Yeah, the Skrull sadly is suffering from, you know, activated ability, summoning sickness. But hey, Tyvar could solve that for you. Maybe there's an absent deck with Skrull. Rafine, huh? And Raven Man. Well, do you see what I see, opponent? <laughs> uh, I see a bunch of... Uh, maybe two power here, but a bunch of one power... Okay, one two power and two one... Uh, okay, two two power and one one power minion, and I have Geek's Command, so... Ah, uh, I'm sorry, opponent. I'm sorry. This is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt you a lot. And uh, we can get back our bl Bloodthirst Harvester together with Tyvar. It's just too powerful, so. Ha ha ha. Ah, Geek's Command, what a card. Let's go ahead and. Ah, oh, and that's it. Oh, seven wins, baby. Oh, man. That oh, feels good. Oh my god, that was close. <laughs> I can't lie. Uh, but it's nice to get another playing point, 500 gems in three packs. I mean, yeah, getting 1100 gems worth of value for 375, I mean, three double value, so it, it just it feels, feels pretty good. I just wish I could t turn in the playing points for just some garbage here and there. Maybe when they have next uh, qualifier tournament uh, with just standard best of one, I'll do that, try to cash some gems in. Uh, either way, the deck is really, really fun to play. I mean, yeah, I think you could definitely... The problem with this deck is that the games are very, very long. I mean, there's, I think, five games that were over 12 minutes long, so I'm gonna have to cut some. I don't know which ones I'm gonna pick from my actual YouTube video, but hopefully you enjoy what I pick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, we didn't draw the Bankbuster that often, which was kind of strange, and uh, Shielded was here and there. Uh, Nissa I saw quite a bit for just having a one copy. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a very, very fun deck, but like I said, uh, you have, you will have a good win rate and there's a lot of opportunities, opportunities to make mistakes. I think I did them uh, in, uh, not the mono black deck, but the one before, I can't remember which one it was, but either way, you have to be focused and be prepared that the games are going to be very long, but yeah, you can have a very, very high win rate. E either way, thanks so much for watching till the end, you rock, like and subscribe, and... Oh my god, fuck you,